Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi washabihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah, we are still discussing on chapter 4 of our book Post Islamic Psychology a transcendent model to achieve peace, happiness and success in the 21st century and uh, the subtopic that we are discussing today is the continuation of the characteristic and factors of mental illnesses and how uh, we define mental illnesses and how we are actually going to understand the factors affect, affecting mental illnesses and the signs of epigenetics and showing how we can actually overcome uh, the problems of mental illnesses in the 21st century insha'Allah. So I'm going to read uh, one or two more paragraphs here and then give you some more ideas about uh, this discussion which we have uh, discussed at the, in the video before that. Eh? If a person's genetic makeup caused them to become mentally ill, there would, be, there would be little that could be done to stop mental illnesses from occurring. But since it is the interaction with the environment which produces mental illnesses, there is much that can be done to remedy this problem. If the interaction of the individuals with their environment produces mental illnesses, then there could be further interaction with the environment which bring about a cure to that individual mental illnesses. Just as there are conditions of environmental influences which produces mental illnesses, there are also conditions of environmental influences that can cure mental illnesses. So for every disease there's a cure, even for mental illnesses there's a cure. So because we are interacting in the environment, the social, physical, social, intra and uh, uh, intersocial environment within the framework of ourselves, our family, our society and the world, these are the influences that's affecting us in the conditioning and applying the laws of learning uh, to a certain extent that drift us towards some form of mental problems like depression, anxiety, uh, psychosis and so on. So just as there are conditions of environment influence that which produces mental illnesses, there are also conditions of environmental influence that can cure mental illnesses. It would be also possible for human society to be such that the condition of environmental influence which produce mental illnesses does not exist. So if we have a paradisal society, a perfect society, all right, then we would have zero mental illnesses if that is the case. But we are not living in a perfect world. This dunya is the lowest of the heavens. So the lowest of heavens naturally has the play of free will and in the play of free will there is also good and evil. So there is also happiness and suffering. So at that level, we would have to increase the level of happiness and decrease the level of suffering. And to do that, we have to increase the level of mental wellness and decrease the mental of uh, the, the, the level of mental illnesses. All right? So the new sense of epigenetics provides hope that this can be achieved in the future. So we can not as achieve zero mental illnesses. Maybe our Prof. Mohadi Jenkins is very optimistic uh, in the real world. We will have to face uh, many challenges. But inshallah, this is the utopian idea that we are trying to bring across for Muslims to understand that there are solutions to all our problems in this dunya. Uh, and we are to strive and be achievers in trying to transform this world so that we have less problem. So, much of mental illnesses which now exist is an attempt by the consciousness of individuals to adjust to their insane environment. Unfortunately, the world is getting more insane. Uh, we are living in a very artificial environment. It is like a plastic heaven. It is like a heaven for hedonistic, animalistic behavior. It is a heaven for materialism. It is a heaven for environmental destruction. It is a heaven for greed, uh, for uh, injustice, for so many things. So when you have all that, this is an insane world in a way. But because it is an insane world, it will create many insane people, as simple as that. If you have a less insane world, you have a less insane uh, citizens of the world. So that is our goal. Naturally, there will be challenges. Huh? There's no way that Allah gives you this world, this dunya, with your free will, except that you are to strive to achieve your best, to fulfill the best, to receive the best from Allah and utilize whatever means and ways that you have to lead a good life, a normal a happy life free from mental illnesses. So, in a truly sane world, there will be no mentally ill people regardless what genetic makeup inheritance they are brought into the world. Remember, I mentioned in the previous, 
previous in the sense of epigenetics if you have many generations of good people the tendencies of the weak genes to be expressed will get less and less and less and less so the self become more manifested towards uh, the perfection of being or the goodness of being or the fullness the wellness of men uh, our mental state eh? Regardless of what genetic influence they are brought into the world, it would be, it will be appeared that the unique physical and neuro neurological structure of each individual, while having quite a large effect on the nature of that individual interaction with the environment, they only have a small impact on the total development when compared to the experiences of life. So all the experiences of life at the spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical level, all of what the environment impinge on us and what we impinge back to the environment, the self, at the self, his family, society, and uh, universal level will then be an expression of our goodness, of our positivity, of our sense of well-being in trying to find peace, happiness, justice, fulfillment, and achievement in this life. So if that is the case, this total development of that self would be then moving towards perfection and moving towards goodness and moving towards being the caliph of Allah but if we go regress which I have shown in many many other videos then we would then at the spiritual emotional mental and physical level become deprived human beings and deprived human beings are those people who are mentally unsound so you have deprived human beings you can see many deprived human beings like Stalin or like uh, uh, like uh, Hitler or like uh, many of these great evil killers, uh, Pol Pot and all that, they kill millions and millions and millions of people and when they ask why these people were being killed, well they say these are accidents of revolution so to create a revolution, a communist revolution, a secular materialistic revolution doesn't matter if you kill 30 million people, that's what Stalin did uh, Pol Pot, 3 million Cambodian innocent just sent out to the field to be killed they had the killing fields so these are the people who are insane bringing an insane society based on materialism so if we human beings huh, if to are uh, uh, to just lead a life that is based on materialism there will be no sense of purpose and meaning in life except material existence so if we follow the communistic path which a lot of countries experience in the 20th and even in the 21st century they are leading their citizens towards self-destruction and there will be oppression because there is no moral values everything is just materialistic there is no spiritual well-being there is no a higher existence apart from this physical existence which we know we'll die at 60 70 or 100 years all right so we have to understand that when we create a good society i do not want to use a perfect society because perfection is something that is very very utopian but if we can say that we are creating a good society and each generation create a better generation and a better generation and a better generation then we will have less and less anxiety definitely we have less and less depression and when we have these two major problems resolve anxiety and depression and all the other uh, sub psychological offshoots of these two major problems would then be very very uh, what do you call it reduced much reduced and when that happened we have a far more happier healthier and wonderfully mentally stable individuals from the children to the teenagers to the adults to the families to the society to the structure and that is our dream that is our vision and our mission in life so every muslims must have that sense of vision and mission to do something good all right so for example when we write this book we, we are trying to say okay uh, there is one chapter here on uh, the khalifa circle how you can create small circles of people to influence your environment so that you create better societies at your local level whether it is you are trying to help to plant more trees so that you can reduce global warming or whether you want to have counseling or motivation or coaching or counseling session for the young people so that the elderly can help the young, the young can help the young, professionals can help them to overcome their challenges in life in terms of uh, social problems, 
relationship problems, uh, tendencies towards, for example, uh, frustration, anguish, depression, anxiety, uh, suicidal tendencies, drug addiction, phonographic addiction, you name it. There are thousands of challenges as we uh, traverse this world. This world is like a travelling, a path in which Allah has ordained that we are supposed to go. It's just for a short period because in the Akhirah when Allah asks us, how long have you been on this earth? And we all answered, it's just like a day or part of a day. <laughs> Imagine, the whole dunya that we live for 100 years is just like part of a day in the Akhirah. So if that is the case, then we must have a better vision and mission in life to, for us to aspire something higher. All right? And each and of us, if we can aspire to do something higher, something good, it will be for our own good. For example, if we help somebody who is in distress, uh, Allah initially give us this hormone oxytocin and we feel good and happy. All right? If we do something that is nice, we get more serotonin and we feel happier by doing all these good things. So actually, these are part and parcel of the plan of Allah. You do good, you get reward immediately. Uh, neurologically, you get the reward, but you do evil, then you'll be punished in terms of the flashback and the anxiety and depression that you have to go through. So these are studies that have been carried out, and what is important is for us to understand that even whatever is the genetic makeup of any of us, whatever are the gene tendencies, we know we always have hope in Allah for us to become a wonderful servant of Allah, leading a wonderful good life in, on this good earth, striving to strive to make ourselves good, helping others to be good, making the world good, inshallah.